Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to turn day into night inside of Photoshop. <laughs> All right, guys, I've got a cool tutorial for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this scene here and I'm going to turn it into a nighttime scene inside of Photoshop. Now, I've got a couple of photographs that I grabbed. I've grabbed this photograph here and then I grabbed one here that I'm going to use for the sky. Um, if you need photographs like this to play around and experiment with, check out Adobe Stock, which is where I got these from. The cool thing about it is you can go onto Adobe Stock and even find it within Photoshop in fact, if you go here in the library, you can start searching here and it will go in and start pulling in photographs. So you can bring these photographs into Photoshop and start using them right away for free. And now if you decide to use them later on, you know, for commercial uses, then you can license those images. The watermark will go away and they'll be replaced with full resolution. For 10 free images, check out the link underneath. Okay, here's our scene. And we're going to turn this into a nighttime scene. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, there's a couple of things we need to do is we're going to be doing a colorizing effect and then we're going to make the light show. But the first thing we're going to do is something with the sky. I don't want to use the current sky, although it would work. It's not super exciting. So I'm going to grab the quick select brush or the quick select tool and just draw in there to get a shape around that city. In fact, I'm going to go over the edge there because that white is kind of boring and I'm just going to pretend that's the night sky. And I'm going to hit the Alt or the Option key to just kind of go over those edges there and just pick up that edge. All right, that's looking pretty good. And I'm just going to hit the Q key to see what it's going to look like. And if there's areas I missed, I'm just going to grab the brush here. Make sure it's a hard edge brush by clicking on there and just pull the hardness all the way up. Make this a little bit smaller and I can just kind of making sure I'm painting with black. Just touch up these little edges here. And let's just hit the Q key one more time. It goes back to a selection. Perfect. So I just want to mask this out. And all I need to do is go to the layer here and see the layer mask. I'm just going to click on that layer mask and it cuts it out. Now, if it goes like this where it's back to front, no big deal. We can just hit Control I or Command I to inverse that. That inverts the mask. And now we can see we've beautifully cut out our sky. So I want to replace this guy with this more ominous kind of looking sky. It's just kind of cool with the clouds and the moon. So I'm going to combine the images. I'm just going to click and drag into the tab. The new photo will appear. Don't release yet. And now move your cursor over the photo and release. And now you'll see the new photos in there. So let's put it underneath. We're just going to click it and drag it in the layers panel to the bottom. So now it's under there. Looks like we got to resize this and reposition a little bit. So I want to fill that up. It's not bad. If I want to make that moon bigger, I could. I could just hit Control T for free transform, and I could just click and drag that out to make it bigger. In fact, why don't I just do that? And I'm just going to drag it over there to position it. Now, if you didn't want to do that, the other option you could have done is just grab your eyedropper here, sample that color, and then I'll show you what, how it would have worked there. And just grab a brush and you could have just started painting to fill in those gaps. But in this case, I don't mind an oversized moon. We don't have to go for super realism. And this is kind of fun. All right. So what we want to do now is we need to make this look like it's nighttime. And there's a number of different ways of doing this. But one of the ways I like to do it is I'm going to apply a lot. A lot is a really quick way to apply more or less just like a preset, but it's more mathematical based. So it actually gives better quality. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here and we want to add a new adjustment layer. Now, if you're looking for the word light, you won't find it. But what you will find is color lookup. And LUT is LUT, which is a lookup table. So if we click there, we get our LUT. It's not doing anything yet. But what we want to do now is we want to actually load in our LUT. So we're just going to click here, load 3D LUT. And you'll see there's some that come with Photoshop. And one of them is called Moonlight. And if I click on Moonlight, what it does is it gives us this nice nighttime effect. So it's a good way to get started. Great. So the next thing I want to do, though, is I want to make sure it's just affecting this and not that sky underneath, because I kind of like that sky. So the way to do it is there's two different ways. In the Properties panel, see that little square there with the arrow? We can click on that, and that will clip that to the layer directly underneath it. In fact, we'll do that. 
And notice now that this adjustment is only affecting the layer underneath. It's not affecting our background anymore. So it's entirely up to you whether or not you want to do it that way. So I kind of like that. That's looking good. So I'm just going to turn it off for a sec because one of the things I would really love to do here is make this look even more kind of sunny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under here and I'm going to grab a curves adjustment. So we're just going to go under the curves here and we're going to create a curves adjustment layer here. And I want to make it more yellow. So I'm going to grab the blue channel under here. See so yeah, under properties, change that from RGB to blue. Now the opposite of blue is yellow. So if I pull this down, it's going to give it more of a yellow feel. See that we're reducing the amount of blues and let's particularly do it in the highlights, which is where we really want it. See, so now we've got more yellow and our highlights and that's looking good. Let's go back to RGB and I want to just give it a little bit more boost of brightness. There we go. That's looking quite nice. All right, so we turn our top layer back on. If it doesn't look good, you know, it doesn't look as good, we can duplicate this and I'll show you how we can do that, is we can make two different sets. Um, why don't we do that? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit Control J and I'm going to copy this. So now we've got two copies of the background. And I'm going to drag this one to there. And uh, let's just make sure we're not clipping. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the first two. We're going to select these and we're going to turn them into a group. Hit Control G. And now that group, we're going to call it Night. And then we're going to grab the next two. We're going to turn that off. Hit Control G to put that into group and we're going to call it Day. Excellent. And of course, we'll put our sky on there. Notice these are looking weird. That's because we're in pass through. If we go to normal, it's going to put the colors back to normal. So let's do that on both of those. So now what we've got there is we've got a day and we've got a night layer. All right. So what we want to do now is we're just going to create a mask. So I'm going to click on this layer mask and this mask is white, which means it's not affecting anything on this layer. However, if I grab a brush. I mean, hit the B key for the brush and let's go in here and turn the softness down. We want a nice soft edge brush and I'm going to use the bracket key to change the size of that. All right. So if we got black as the foreground and we're painting with hundred percent opacity, it allows that layer to be cut through and that layer underneath to show. And that's going to show as light. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to undo that. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the practical lighting or the areas that would be lit, which would be the street lamp. So I'm just painting in here carefully. See that? And if you want more accuracy, you know, left bracket key makes it smaller, the brush and the right bracket key makes it bigger. So the first thing we want to do is just paint in these areas that would be lit. That's step number one. So let's go here. There's another lamp here that we'd like to be lit. So I'm just kind of zooming in on that. So let's just go here, just painting in here. Nice. And I also see a third lamp. If we go down here, see there's another lamp on the street down there. And I'm not going to get super detailed with this detail, but I'm um, just for the sake of the tutorial. So it doesn't last forever. You know, there might be a light up here. Maybe you want to turn on and one there. And what you would want to do is just go through, take the time, find the areas you want lit. And paint these very carefully. I'm just going to go a little lighter on these. Like maybe we want this window. Want a light on there. Alright, so you get the general idea of what I'm doing with these lights. You so the next thing that we need to do with the light is if you look at a light in the real world, you'll see that the light source is creating light, but also it's casting light out or is throwing it out. If there's atmosphere, you'll see um, rays of light. But if it's a very crisp, clear night, you won't see those, those rays or those beams. But what you will see is where the light is hitting an object and bouncing off it, such as a wall or the ground, you'll see it. it'll be kind of like a little bit of a floodlight. So to create that, what we're going to do is create a softer brush and I'm going to drop the opacity down to about 60% and we're going to paint with that. 
So we're just going to do like maybe it gets flat a little bit on the ground here and see that just kind of there and also on the wall there it's just going to kind of get a little bit going on there. So let's make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's do the same thing down there and it's going to be kind of flood around there, maybe a little bigger. And we got that flood. Remember, it's coming straight down. Uh, same thing down here. Let's do the same thing. Now, if we've got light here from the windows, that's also going to flood out into the street. You'll see the reflections, different things like that. And, you know, like these would probably create, you know, just very, very small reflections there that you might see on the ground that would be reflecting, especially if the ground is wet. I'm going to undo that last one. But if the ground is actually, we'll do that behind there too. No, actually not that far. So we're going to go behind here around about where that light is. Or if the ground is wet, these reflections are going to be much harder and harder edges. If it's dry like it is here, it's going to be nice soft edges. So that's the second part we've got. Now we've got another part that we need to do. But before we do that, I want to just kind of blur these a little bit to create um, just a little softer, you know, kind of a glow. So let's just go on to this mask right here that we've created. And we're just going to choose filter blur and we're going to grab our Gaussian blur. Now with our Gaussian blur, we don't want to get crazy with it, but we want to give it just a little glow. And so we're just going to kind of pull that up till it just starts to bleed out of those edges a little bit. There we go. Starting to look a little more fairy tale like there we go. We don't want to go too far right now. See, we just got that little glow. It's kind of nice and I'm going to click OK. All right, there's one last element I want to show, and that's the rim light. Now, the reason I saved this to the end is because I wanted to just kind of apply a little bit of that blur first, and then I can be a little more precise where I'm painting these rim lights. And the rim lights are where there's edges that are just kind of catching a little bit of that light, maybe reflecting it or catching it. And I'm going to go in and do some of that right now. So why don't we zoom in, and I'll kind of show you how it works on here. Now, I'm obviously not going to get too crazy with this because, you know, we could be here for hours. Um, and I, you know, and I encourage you to kind of spend some time and really get this nice. But what we're going to do is we're going to grab our brush and we're going to make a very, very small edge brush here. And I'm going to drop my opacity down to about 40%. So I'm just tapping the four key and you can find areas here that are pointing in towards the light, little areas that would be picking it up. See like there, and we can just kind of paint in that rim light. Maybe a little bit across the top there. Then I'm just going to go ahead and do some now just so you can kind of see how it works. Okay, if I zoom out a little bit, you can see what's happening here by adding this rim light. See how it's starting to just add a whole different level of realism to this. So it's really up to you how crazy you want to get with this. You know, there's different things we could do, like maybe under here, instead of being dark like that, you know, we could start to paint with some lighter colors and different things like that to show it. Um, let me just grab a brush here. We could just kind of touch down there a little bit, light, lighten that up because obviously that's being hit by the light. It's being illuminated. So it's going to be brighter. Um, you know, different areas like that. We can go in and do that, you know, like Maybe the edge, top of that bike might be catching a little bit. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and we're going to paint a little bit on there. So what I'm going to do is grab my brush. Just go about there and I'm going to drop this down to like two, just 20% opacity. And I'm just going to gently just paint some of this on. Because that's an edge there that that light would be hitting. So you can kind of see what we're doing there. And basically what we're doing is we're just kind of sculpting this photograph now by painting with the light. So I think you get the general idea, but there's one more thing I want to do that's going to, uh, and that's our light, you know, like these light bulbs are actually creating light and they're just kind of glowing, but there's no light source. So we're going to add that light source now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer on top. And of course, you know, you would name your layer light. And I'm going to, you know, grab my brush here and I'm going to go for a, you know, I'm just tapping there to sample that, but I'm going to go for a lighter yellow, almost white, but just a little touch of yellow, just a touch in there. And uh, let's make the brush a little bigger, make sure it's soft all the way down. Okay, excellent. And then, you know, maybe a little bigger and see that bulb. We just want to just kind of just tap in there and let's turn our opacity all the way up to hundred. And we would just kind of tap in there for that area that's going to be lit. And we're going to do the same thing for that one. 
and then go all the way down here. We've got other light sources under here, I believe. You know, in different areas like that, you want to make the light source. You could do that, and we're just going to add a little blur. Just go to the Gaussian blur, and we're just going to blur that just to kind of just soften that a little bit. Find it right in the middle. Maybe a little more. There we go. Looking nice. So if you're looking for photographs to practice this technique with, go to Adobe Stock and then download some different photos, bring them into Photoshop and start playing around and experimenting. And it's free to experiment. You don't have to pay to use the photos unless you want to license them. And then they're going to be replaced with the full resolution unwatermarked versions. I'm going to give you a link underneath where you can grab 10 free images from Adobe Stock. Also, if you're a photographer and you're creating photos and you're using your own photos and creating cool photos like this um, and you want to sell them, you can put them on Adobe Stock uh, where there's millions of people are going to see them. And also you can make a little bit of extra revenue there. And to become a contributor, the link is underneath. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, smash that like button into dust. Um, what did you guys think about it? Drop a comment. Tell me what you liked about this particular technique. Do you like this? Um, are you going to do it? And what would you like to learn next time? Let me know. And by the way, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button right now. Become part of the Cafe Crew and get a new tutorial every single week. So anyway, guys, until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.